If you encounter a pulley question on your MCAT, it could cause you some tension. In this video, we're going to cover two MCAT style questions on tension and pulleys. The first will go through your basic understanding of these physics concepts, and the second is going to be most similar to a question that you could see on your real test day. So let's get started. Here's our first question on pulleys. Go ahead, pause this video, give this question a shot on your own, and then we'll come back and work through it together. All right, let's walk through this situation in the question stem. A student is lifting a 10 kilogram box with a single pulley system. So I'm just gonna draw a sketch of a pulley system here. Here's my student, right? And we're lifting it one meter. One meter. And then they ask, they say, okay, we now have a two pulley system, right? So in a two pulley system, we're gonna go up and around, hook in here. And then we have our box here. And again, we're going to have our student pulling, and again, it's still one meter. So let's go through the relationship of work done in a pulley system. So work, the equation for work is force times distance. This is true in any of the 4A content category style questions, right? Work is force times distance. Work is in joules and force is in newtons and distance is in meters for our SI units. So our work done by this student depends on the force, right, which in this case is the mass of the object times gravity times the distance that the object needs to travel. Now here's the key thing. That work is not dependent on how many pulleys there are in the pulley system. We still have to move this 10 kilogram box, which would be about 100 newtons, one meter regardless of how many pulleys are in there. So even if, if we have one pulley or two pulleys, we're still going to do the same amount of work. And that's why the answer for this first question is C. Now you may be like, Amanda, I have used pulleys before and I know there's a difference between using two pulleys versus one. I have used it and it's easier with two pulleys. You are absolutely correct. So let's go through why it appears to be easier to use multiple pulley systems compared to one. This is a concept called mechanical advantage. So let's talk about that. Okay, so here we have four different pulleys. We have a single pulley, two pulleys, three and four. We're just counting the little circles here. That means we have multiple pulleys in the system. And I'm gonna walk you through how each of these pulleys changes the force that we're experiencing without changing the overall work. So each of these systems, we have 100 newtons of force. So our object is probably 10, around 10 kilograms, right? And multiplying that by gravity, we have 100 newtons. So that's our force of our object pointing downwards. Now, in a single pulley system, the tension of the rope is going to be equal to that gravitational force, so 100 newtons. So that 100 newtons is just getting transferred to whoever is pulling that pulley, right? Us, our little friend or student is pulling that pulley. So we are still experiencing 100 newtons of force. All right, and if we want to move this object 10 centimeters, we will have to pull for 10 centimeters. We will have to move the rope 10 centimeters. So again, work is force times distance. We have the exact same work happening with our student as lifting the object. So our work on one side of the pulley system has to equal our work on the other side of the pulley system. This is going to be true for all four pulleys, all right? So our work in, work in, our input has to equal our work out. This is a core concept of most physics, right? Work energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred, so we're just transferring work um, from the object to the person, right? Now, again, you're like, Amanda, I have used a pulley and I've lifted an object and even with a single pulley, it feels easier. That's absolutely true. It's because your vector of movement is going with gravity versus against it. So this is more of a dynamic where you're, it appears to feel easier because we're, our vector systems are working with each other than pushing this object up against gravity. It appears to feel easier, but you're actually doing the same amount of work, all right? Now let's move to the second pulley system. This is where things get interesting and it has to do with tension. So we still have our 100 newtons, we're still moving at 10 centimeters, but now we have essentially doubled the rope, right? We have the rope here and the rope here. So even though it's all connected, 
from the perspective of moving this object, we are now splitting the force across these two ropes. So the tension experience in these two ropes has to add up to equal 100 newtons. So if there's two ropes and they need to add up to equal 100 newtons. That means each rope is going to experience 50 newtons of force. That means that in this one part of the rope that's getting transferred over the pulley, we're going to experience 50 newtons of force. But I just told you, right, that we cannot have a difference in work, all right? So our work in has to equal our work out. So if our force has gone down by two, it's divided by two, what do we need to do to compensate to make the work still equal the work in, right? So if we still need to equal 100 newtons times 10 centimeters, right? So we'll just do this. We'll say it's 1,000 newton centimeters, right? We still need to have it be 1,000 newton centimeters on the other side. So what do we do? If you guess double the distance, you are absolutely correct. We double the distance that you need to pull to 20 centimeters. That will still add up to 1,000 newton centimeters. So we're essentially exchanging force for distance, all right? We're dividing the force by two, but then doubling the distance. Now, why would we do that? Because it's a lot easier to pull 20 centimeters of 50 newtons than it is to pull 100 newtons, even 10 centimeters, right? There's a certain limit to what we can pull. We can pull for a long time with less force. So it does appear to feel easier, but again, the overall work is the same. And what's really cool about pulleys is that the number of ropes or the number of pulleys is the number we divide the force by. So let's go ahead and do this next set. We again have 100 newtons going 10 centimeters. So our work in is going to be 1,000 newton centimeters. What does the work out need to be? Well, we have to have 1,000 newton centimeters on the side, but we now have three ropes. All right, so the tension in each rope is the total gravitational force divided by three. So it's going to be about 33 and a third, right, to divide that up. And so that means the force that this rope is experiencing, right, is going to be 33 and a third. And that means that we now need to triple the distance that we're pulling the rope. So we're now up to 30 centimeters. And then finally, I'll give you guys a second to try this on your own. What would happen if we had four ropes with 100 newtons? All right, if you wrote that each rope experiences 25 newtons of force, you are absolutely correct. We're dividing by four, and that means this final rope here is also experiencing 25 newtons of force, and we have to now do four times the distance. So 10 times four is 40 centimeters. It's going to give us 1,000 newton centimeters. All right, so here's the quick rule. If they ask you about the force in a multiple pulley system, you just take the gravitational force and you divide by the number of ropes or pulleys. All right, if they ask you about the distances on a multiple pulley system, you take the number of ropes or pulleys and multiply the distance that you moved the object. So pulleys are actually pretty simple from a math perspective, right? The calculations themselves are not too complicated, but I want you to make sure you understand the concept of the idea that work in has to equal work out on a pulley system. And what we're doing with multiple pulleys is just exchanging force for distance. Before we move on to that more challenging MCAT style question, please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. If you'd like more in-depth interactive lessons on topics like these that also teach active practice strategies and test taking tips, please check out the link in the caption below for my next available MCAT course. All right, you know what to do. Go ahead, pause this video, try this question on your own first, and then we'll come back and do it together. Okay, so tricky question stems like this can feel really overwhelming, and they're very common on physics questions on the AMC materials and on test day. So the key to doing this question is actually the setup. All right, so in this case, we're gonna draw a free body diagram to understand the setup, which can help us navigate how to answer this question. So let's get started with our two boxes. So we've got a box that is six kilograms, which we'll draw here. And we've got a box that is nine kilograms, which we'll draw here, a little bigger, right? And they're connected by a rope that is over a pulley, right? So if I kind of, okay, here's the pulley, 
and then here's my rope. It doesn't have to be pretty, it's just what we would draw on test day. So they're here and they're at rest and they're suspended. And we said, assuming the rope and the pulley are massless, that's great, that means we just don't need to include it in our calculations. What will be the acceleration of the boxes after they are released from rest? So they're kind of being held here and they're released from rest in terms of gravity G. So we're asked for the acceleration of the overall system, right? It's like net acceleration. You're like, whoa, how do I do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is think about what's happening with these boxes as soon as they're released from rest. So take a moment and say, okay, if I release these two boxes, where would they go? What direction would they move? Um, same direction opposite, right? So take a second here. If you guessed that the nine kilogram box would move downwards, pulling the six kilogram box upwards, you're absolutely correct, right? Nine kilogram box is heavier, it's going to pull it downwards, and our six kilogram box is going to go upwards against gravity, right? It's going to kind of be pulled against its own gravitational force. And that means that we have vectors, right? Movement vectors. So we have our six kilogram ones, so force for six and our force for nine, and they're in opposite directions. So what do we do to calculate a net vector, net force, when we have two vectors in opposite directions? We subtract them. So we're going to subtract our nine kilogram box, which will be 9g, right, because we're doing it in terms of gravity, so this is our force of our 9 kilogram box, minus, let's draw here, minus our 6 kilogram box, also multiplied by g to get to our net force, right? So if they asked us for force, we'd be done. Cool, 9 minus 6g, we're good to go. But they didn't, they asked us for net acceleration. So we need to go one more step and say force is mass times acceleration. We need to isolate acceleration, so we need to think about what is the net mass of the whole system. So that means we just add the masses, right? So the net mass is 9 plus 6, which is 15. So our m is 15 here, which means we can divide this guy by 15, and we will isolate A, right? So we now have our equation A equals 9G minus 6G over 15. That's not one of our options, so we do need to simplify, right? So now we can say, okay, 9G minus 6G would be 3G over 15, and 3 divided by 15 is 1 fifth, so 1G over which matches perfectly with B. Now, we knew we needed our 15 variable. We knew it wasn't going to just be gravity, so you could also eliminate D right away before moving on and doing our calculations. And that was how to tackle pulley and tension questions on the MCAT. If that was helpful for you, please share this video with your pre-med community. Remember, studying for the MCAT is hard and stressful, and we need all the help we can get. Thanks for joining me, and again, happy studying.